Hello, my name is Patricia Rankin. I am attending Northern Arizona University online. I have been assigned a video project related to business ethics. I will be analyzing the ethical case, GM and the ignition switch. It is deja vu all over again. I'll also talk about te teleological and deontological framework. What aligns with my own personal beliefs? The deontological framework focuses on right or wrong. I characterize mostly with this framework. The teleological framework focuses more on results of conduct and how it may impact others. I will also analyze the fundamental ethical issue facing GM, the possible ethical resolutions, and analysis of how my classmates might respond differently to this ethical issue. So a little background on the um, issue facing GM. General Motors builds a car knowing that there is a defect in the design and parts of the car, a faulty ignition switch. But after calculating the cost of fixing the problem, GM decides it is more cost efficient to have the defective cars on the road rather than recalling the cars. The year was 1971 and the car was the Ford Pinto. Fast forward 30 years, GM discovered a flaw in the ignition switch, but waited 13 years before they started recalling the cars. So GM realized that there have been fatalities, but they placed the blame on um, some of the instances being at very high speeds that would prevent the deployment of the bag, and also for uh, not wearing seat belts and the use of alcohol while operating a vehicle. Uh, so some other ethical issues, um, they, you know, GM employees and engineering team knew about the design flaw in 2004 and as far back as 2001. However, they chose not to address the design flaw. Uh, the president even, president even acknowledged the investigation into the issue uh, was not robust as it should be. Um, the consequences of an action, uh, it compromises consumer safety, uh, there's fines and settlements, employees are terminated, directors facing lawsuits, um, there's a lack of transparency, uh, increase of fatalities, and loss of, custo loss of customer uh, trust. Um, there was also a cost analysis um, per a 2005 memo, um, basically determining basically determining the value of a life as compared to fixing the problem. Um, so, what do we? What's the outcome of the ethical issues? Um, so, to sum it up, putting a value on a human life. Uh, cost benefit analysis for the switches did not consider the cost of the harm to the customer. Uh, the dismissal of employees um, was a uh, lack of fairness to the engineers that expressed a concern initially. Uh, the employee directed to use specific wording other than defect in communications related to the safety issues. Um, and the internal issues with the GM executives pointing the blame and not taking ownership of the issue. Um, they also, GM also bought lower quality components um, below GM specifications for cost savings. They failed to properly investigate crashes where airbags were not deployed. So some ethical resolutions could have been taken from a deontological perspective. If it, we're talking about pre-release, um, um, they could have addressed the design flaw immediately. The engineering team could have rejected the approval of the design. They could have had more, a more robust investigation into whether the issue was systemic. Uh, they could have also reevaluated the component received from the supplier to ensure it meets GM specifications. Um, there should be honesty and transparency of the issue with the board of directors and its stakeholders. Um, and also for GM to be more concerned for the safety of the customer versus only being worried about their bottom line. If we're talking about post-release of the car, uh, they should have initiated the recall when the design flaw was discovered. They should have had a more robust investigation into the root cause of the issue and taking a more holistic stance uh, in the investigation. The use of the cost analysis was not appropriate, appropriate to assess fixing a defect versus the value of a life. And then there should have been a culture shift and having a code of ethics policy that everyone trains to and affirms. So how might my classmates uh, respond differently? In my analysis, I found only one classmate that would respond differently, and we will call this person JM. I came to this conclusion based on their response to a similar case. All other classmates in the discussion responded similarly as I did. Specifically, this individual indicated they may have thought this was normal and they did it as they were directed based 
because the higher ups are the decision makers. I think this may have been based on the level of the employee uh, in the organization, so such as hierarchy, uh, meaning the difference of what a subordinate would do versus a manager, director, or executive. I think there was a fear of the consequences that could happen to them versus not saying anything at all. This individual indicated they were more in line with the deontological framework, the same as me. So I took a look at the other classmates. In my analysis, I reviewed responses to other case types with a focus on the individuals who felt they fell more into the uh, teal teleological framework. There were four out of 12 individuals in this category. The remaining felt they were deontologists. My analysis indicates similar responses to mine. Therefore, out of my 12 classmates, there was only one that responded differently. However, I do think if there were certain circumstances, JM might have responded differently. Specifically, I think JM might respond differently if someone close to them had been injured or even died from this known defect. Ultimately, we all want to work for companies that provide safe products. And it is the responsibility of every employee to do the right thing. If they feel something is unethical, they should speak up. By not speaking up, we are agreeing to the actions and unethical behavior if encountered. We all have a choice, and even if you lose your job, life goes on, and there are other opportunities that may pre present. Losing that job um, because you stood up for something you believe in may be the best thing in the long run. If we sacrifice our ethics, which we do by not speaking up, it is a slippery slope. One is basically saying, I, I agree with the actions. Also, I understand this was many years ago, and yes, maybe I would have felt the same, but I think people do have choices in everything they do, even back then. Thank you.